Okay, it is time to read aloud today, Top Secret, and we are prepared for chapter four. Eric? Oh, now is it working? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. So anytime you read a book, if you've paused, I would always go back and see what you read last. So he was at the library. Does anyone remember what happened at the library? Angie? Um, the boy was reading his notebook, and then, um, oh. and then Alan said, um, if you want everybody to hear you, speak even louder. And he did, and then the librarian came and kicked him out and grabbed him by the ear. Yes. So he got uh, Mr. Brewster in trouble again. Okay. All right, so the librarian sent him home, and chapter four is called Discovery. Discovery. The next day, I did not go back to the library. In fact, I did not go any place. I was not allowed to. It seems my parents were very upset that I had stayed so late at the library, especially when I let it slip that I had not been working on my lipstick project. At first, I was upset too, but the way things turned out, I was sure glad I stayed home that day. I spent the morning in my room reading over my notebook. In the afternoon, when my father was asleep on the couch and my mother was in the den playing the piano, I slipped out the back door to talk to Grandpa. Grandpa was resting in a lounge chair on the back porch, listening to some old records on his old phonograph. I motioned for him to be quiet until I had the back door shut. He turned up the volume on the phonograph a little. We both nodded, agreeing that it was safe to talk. Tell me more about yesterday, he said. Let me show you my notebook, I said. No, scientists work better alone. Just tell me what you found out. I think I found all the pieces to the picture, but one, oh, sorry. I think I found all the pieces to the picture, but one. I'm sure if I could have stayed at the library just a little longer. Aren't you forgetting something, Alan? What's that? Remember the avocado I showed you that was really only half an avocado? Yes, I remember. Then you mean I don't have to find the last piece to make my discovery? Just enough pieces arranged in the proper order so you can almost see the whole picture. Then you must use the sixth tool. All right, who can remember? What is the sixth tool? Josiah? Your brain. Your brain? Um, he pointed to his head. Like the time I took my bike apart and tried to put it back together again. The pieces had to fit just a certain way, but I couldn't remember. So what did you do? I tried every combination I could think of until I finally found the right way. Grandpa pointed to his head. But I've tried, Grandpa. I've tried putting the pieces together. I just can't seem to see the picture. Have you tried thinking crazy? Crazy? Grandpa smiled and his eyes twinkled. If I were to tell you, he said, that you could whisper and someone halfway around the world in China could hear you, would you think I was crazy? Sure, I laughed. What if I were whispering into a telephone? Well, that's different. Only because you see the whole picture. I see what you mean. And if I were to tell you that the sky was filled with waves that carry pictures, television, you're catching on. Learn to think crazy, Alan. Let your mind go. Let your mind go. Don't be afraid to think of silly things, stupid things, things so ridiculous that you burst out laughing at the mere thought of them. That's the power of the sixth tool, Alan, to think of things no one else has ever thought of before. I understand. With that, Grandpa put on another record, leaned back in his lounge chair, and closed his eyes. I opened my notebook to a clean page and wrote the words, Think crazy. Directly below it, I made the following two lists. Plant photosynthesis, number one, water. Number two, carbon dioxide. Number three, chlorophyll. And then to the side of that, he wrote human photosynthesis, water, carbon dioxide, and hemoglobin. The first list contained the necessary ingredients, which in the presence of sunlight made photosynthesis possible in plants. 
The second list contained three substances found in our blood. I ran head on into the same old problem, the missing piece. How to make the hemoglobin in our blood, how to make the hemoglobin in our blood do what chlorophyll does in plants. But grandpa said that I didn't need to find all the pieces. All I had to do was think crazy. Okay, Alan Brewster, you may begin now. Go ahead, no one's looking. Think, I couldn't think. Try, I closed my eyes real tight, nothing. All I could think about was the music from Grandpa's phonograph recording. The music, that record, what was it? Something Grandpa had told me, a story, about a workman at a company, a company that gold-plated records. The workman dropped a cheese sandwich into the vat of gold, didn't tell anyone. The gold plating was better than they had ever seen before. The workman confessed. They had the workman's wife make a whole lot of cheese sandwiches. They kept adding them to the vat of gold until they had the sandwich analyzed in the laboratory and found out that it was the sodium in the cheese that was the missing ingredient. Think crazy, think crazy. The next thing I knew, I was in the kitchen opening cupboards. Was there something I could eat, I said to myself, that would make the hemoglobin in my blood act as chlorophyll does in plants? The whole picture, try to see the whole picture. I started to make myself a cheese sandwich. I stopped. Wait a minute, I thought. I've had a cheese sandwich before, lots of them. That can't be it. Perhaps, I said to myself, it's a combination of different things, just the right things, just the right amount. But what things? Think crazy, anything, just try anything. That's too many things to try. And then it hit me. I ran and got my notebook. I sat down at the kitchen table and began flipping through the pages. I had written something down. All I had to do was find it. There it was. In my notebook, I had written the following chemical formulas. All right, I'm gonna show my virtual kiddos first. Hello. All right, no, I'll pause you guys, I'll be right back. All right, I am back. So the biggest difference between those two substances was that chlorophyll contained magnesium, whereas hemoglobin contained Fe, which is iron. Think crazy. I will only try those things that contain magnesium, I said, hitting my fist on the kitchen table. So you think he is trying to try things with magnesium because that's what's in chlorophyll? Hmm. Uh, I tiptoed into the living room past my father, who was still asleep on the couch. I selected the M volume of the encyclopedia and returned to the kitchen. I looked up the word magnesium and found the following list of foods had it. Beans, nuts, whole grain cereal, and liver. Wouldn't you know it, I can't stand liver. I also read that salt water contained magnesium. Think crazy, I repeated the words. I plugged in mom's blender and started throwing things in, careful to write down in my notebook exactly how much of each thing. So is he doing an investigation now? Yeah. yeah. The only beans we had were some leftover Mexican refried beans. Using the ice cream scooper, I put in one scoop. I found a can of mixed nuts in the cupboard and it was practically empty. I decided to use peanut butter instead, one scoop. We were all out of natural cereal, so I substituted Cocoa Puffs, half a cup. I found some raw liver in the refrigerator. I cut off the smallest piece I thought might work. I was about to add some tap water to the blender when I remembered that the encyclopedia had mentioned salt water. Dad would kill me if he ever found out, but I went upstairs and took a half cup of salt water from his aquarium, being careful not to scoop out any fish. I turned on the blender and my concoction turned into a thick, dark liquid. I poured myself a glass and I drank it. That night, I didn't eat any dinner. I wasn't hungry, not one bit. I've done it, I told Grandpa before I went to bed. I'll never have to eat again. But I was wrong. The next day when I woke up, I was starving. Besides my regular breakfast, I had an extra bowl of cereal and two extra glasses of milk. A few days later, I repeated the experiment. 
Grandpop helped me measure out each ingredient. This time, I added more liver. Again, I went to bed without eating dinner. And the next morning, I still wasn't hungry. I even gave away my lunch at school. I had done it. I was sure of it. Wrong. By dinner time, I was so hungry, I was the first one at the table. Stop chewing on your hand, my mother snapped as she served me my food. Sorry, I responded, not aware of what I was doing. I had three helpings. Food never tasted so good, but I didn't give up. I performed my third experiment the following Sunday afternoon, after my parents had gone for a drive. They had asked Grandpa and me to go along, but we had declined. We had work to do. It seems the more liver I add, I told Grandpa, the longer I can go without eating. You know, said Grandpa, his eyes widening. I think you've got something there. So why is it that when he adds liver, more liver is making him eat less? Cadence? Because he doesn't like it. Okay. Hudson, what do you think? Um, um, yeah, and he's not eating it because he's like, he doesn't feel well. Okay. Noah? Because he's eating more than it. Okay. So people at home are going to take a field trip up to Slot <laughs> for the whiteboard. All right. So those are those two chemical formulas. The only difference, hemoglobin is in animals, and we have iron. And chlorophyll in plants, it has magnesium. So Alan is trying to eat everything that contains lots of magnesium so that he can be more like a plant. And liver is full of magnesium. All right, lost the spot. Mm -hmm. Mom had just gone to the store that morning, so there was plenty of liver in the refrigerator. I took out a huge slimy piece and laid it on the countertop. I was about to cut some off when I stopped. In the name of science, I shrugged, and I threw the whole piece into the blender. I added the other ingredients. I ran the blender for an extra couple of minutes, just to make sure all the liver got dissolved. I poured myself a glass. Did it ever look gross? I shut my eyes. I held my nose. I took a big gulp. It tasted just like liquid liver. I tried to take another sip, but I just couldn't. That night, I didn't eat dinner. My stomach felt funny. I also felt real lightheaded. When I opened my eyes, the room would start to spin around. My mom was worried about me. She sat on the edge of my bed and rubbed my back until I fell asleep. I woke up in the middle of the night. Was I thirsty? I mean, I felt like I could drink the whole Atlantic Ocean, that is, if it weren't salt water. I made my way down the hallway, past Grandpa's room, to the bathroom. I turned on the light, opened the medicine cabinet, and took out my drinking glass. I filled it with water and drank. Water never tasted so good. I refilled my glass and drank again and again and again. When I was on my sixth glass, I noticed myself in the mirror. I froze. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. I've done it, I said to myself, very faintly at first. Then I said it louder. I've done it. I've done it. I began to jump around, shouting at the top of my lungs. My mother was the first to arrive, appearing in the doorway to the bathroom. She took one look at me, then put her hands over her mouth. Dad arrived next. What have you done to yourself? He solved the mystery, said Grandpa, as he wedged himself in between them. That's what he's done. Grandpa was smiling from ear to ear. I looked at myself in the mirror again. I looked perfectly normal, really, except for one small change. My skin had turned bright green, the color of a leaf on a tree. And that's it for today. No. We will see you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.